Once again to ECMID Television in advance of the ECMID Congress coming up in 2016 in Amsterdam. This is where you get to meet the people who are presenting papers, the esteemed faculty that will be coming along and joining us at ECMID 2016. Uh, this morning, joining us from Liverpool, Professor David Molyneux, the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. The professor is a specialist on neglected parasitic diseases, and we're delighted that he's going to be presenting a paper at Congress on exactly that topic. Nice to have you with us, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Good morning to you all, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you very much indeed. So neglected parasitic diseases, Professor. Um, what's the essence, really, of the message within your lecture? Well, I'm going to overview the situation about these diseases because the title neglected tropical diseases was coined about 10 years ago in Berlin and WHO initiated a program which covers 17 of the most prevalent of these infectious agents, many of which are transmitted by insects. But the essence of this is that when we bring these diseases together, they represent a huge burden uh, in tropical uh, and uh, endemic countries which are characterized by poverty, lack of hygiene and sanitation, poor access to health services and health systems. Yes. And we estimate that there are over a billion people infected with these conditions. The message initially, of course, is that we're talking about the poorest people on the planet who receive a very small proportion of the amount of money which is allocated to official health assistance in the poorest countries. The figures that have been published and really haven't changed are that only 0.6% of official development assistance in health goes to address these issues which affect so many people. That's now what I'm, th this is a staggering inequity in terms of health resource distribution. Now, the message that I have is that we've made significant progress over the last 10 years, largely through the massive drug donations which have been given by major pharmaceutical companies to the treatment and control of these diseases. Yes. And we've made massive progress in diseases such as river blindness or onchocerciasis elephantiasis or lymphatic filariasis. In areas of uh, other diseases, we've got new tools, not necessarily expensive tools, which can stop transmission of these diseases to poor people. And many of these conditions are addressable. We don't need new tools, although new better tools and more efficient tools may, of course, come on stream. But one of the messages also here is we have the tools, we can do the job, but with new tools, they cost more, somebody has to pay for them, and poor countries do not necessarily have the resources to do that. With the drug donations, the value of these donations is a staggering two to three billion dollars a year. Very few people recognize this. But we could actually deliver those products for a very small amount of money when we talk about diseases which can be treated by chemotherapy mm -hmm. at a cost of less than 20 cents per person per year treated. So here we have a, a complete imbalance between the, the situation where the drug companies are providing very large quantities of quality products and countries who are not prepared to afford less than 20 cents per person per year to deliver those products. So we have to have more advocacy at the international level, on the one hand, but also at the level of the countries themselves who should be able to afford to pr provide these products, because these products are all on the WHO essential medicines list. Indeed. So there is an obligation of countries actually to deliver these products. The challenges we have now in terms of the elimination of some of these conditions, which are slated for elimination by 2020, are issues around security. We have changes in the biology of some of these organisms because um, transmission is sometimes uh, controlled by uh, uh, insecticide-treated materials or indoor residual spraying, and we're seeing massive resistance to insecticides. There is some evidence of drug resistance emerging, 
and we need countries to buy into the need to strengthen their own capacities to deliver what are essentially free products. And my take-home message is very often that if we can't deliver free drugs to poor people, what can we do in international health? And the other issue is we are facing a chronic pandemic of these infections. Whilst we've made some progress, there's a long way to go. But I compare these diseases in terms of their mortality burden. The global burden of disease study emphasized that annual mortality was about 150,000 deaths per year. But the reality is that it's nearer 350,000 because of their counting system didn't include conditions like snake bite, mm -hmm. like uh, neurological conditions such as epilepsy caused by a parasite called cystosychosis, a tapeworm, didn't include rabies, uh, which kills about 55,000 people a year. So the cumulative mortality is about 300 to 350,000 deaths per year associated with these conditions. What do you say then, doctor or professor, in, in relation to that? How many of those deaths do you believe are currently preventable with better public health policy and better uh, distribution of, of, of drugs? Say, if I was to say nearly all of them, uh, you may be surprised. But the reality is that there is none of these conditions is, is um, not capable of being treated. Um, it's a question of access to drugs on the one hand, but also application of the technologies we know work to prevent transmission. Um, for example, rabies. Common in South Africa, KwaZulu-Natal is a big anti-rabies program. The way we tackle rabies with these diseases which have an association with animals is to engage with the animal health sector. So you vaccinate the dogs, you reduce rabies transmission dramatically. Indeed. Um, so one of the challenges we face are obviously epidemiological challenges, challenges associated with access to populations, drug and insecticide resistance. But the other challenge we have is engaging the other sectors the animal health sector, the water and sanitation sector. Because if we had good water and good sanitation provision, then these diseases would be dramatically reduced. Indeed. So in a sense, it's, it's a combination of issues. It's not just clinical treatment for a condition. What do you most hope for, Professor, as a result of your presentation at ESCMED well, this year? Uh, advocacy for a recognition that these diseases actually matter. We, I call them, in a discussion with The Lancet last year, the chronic pandemic. I use the chronic pandemic in the context of the fact we were discussing at a time when the Ebola crisis was at its height. Mm -hmm. Ebola killed 12,000 people in a year. That is 10 times to 15 times less, and maybe more, than these diseases kill in a year. And yet they're off the radar screen of politicians, public health advocates. So here we have a situation where, in my judgment, and the same applies to HIV, we have demonstrable inequity. Indeed. We have products that work. They are products which poor people don't have access to. The products are free, so it's up to the country to apply for those products and resource their delivery, which is between 1 and 3 percent of the national health expenditures of the poorest countries on the planet. But they're not prepared to pay for the delivery of free drugs, which they would otherwise have to buy and deliver wow. if they fulfill their obligations. So we have real strong policy issues here about what, how, pe how countries and donors allocate resources for the diseases of the majority. We're talking about a billion to two billion people afflicted by these conditions with a mortality of 350,000 people a year, roughly, and people who actually, in my judgment, have a right. It's within the framework of universal health coverage. It's in the, within the framework of equity. And it's within the framework of human rights. So in my judgment, 
the message I have is we have the tools. We're aware of some of the challenges. But if we distributed the resources more appropriately in relation to the people who really need them and who are the poorest, then we would make a far greater impact on public health. So that's my take home message. And really the emphasis is availability of products, addressing equity, using a small proportion of country resources as well as donor resources to deliver products which could make a tremendous difference to some of the most disabling diseases there are, blindness, disability and so on, as well as diseases which cause a hidden mortality and a grossly underestimated mortality in comparison with the conditions which get the headlines. Wow, those are the words of Professor David Molyneux talking about the chronic pandemic of neglected parasitic diseases. He's presenting a paper, as you've heard, at ESCMED 2016. Make sure that you're signing up and in the audience to watch that fantastic presentation. And more power to you, Professor. Thank you for joining us on ECMED TV this year in advance of your presentation. It's been a pleasure having you. And thank you for allowing me the opportunity to present my rather controversial and vigorous views.